네, 아, 세 분께 유쾌한 이야기 함께 잘 들어봐. Uh, thank you for the interesting story of making an animation. The consumption energy's direction is changing from the individual level to the social level, and in the economy in the past, you know, owning more than others was the basis of your happiness. But now, if you can enjoy, you don't have to uh, be fixated to owning the thing as long as you can enjoy it. That is the change that we are seeing, which is a positive change. And so what is the core solutions of a collaboration? Now, we will listen to this uh, answer to this question from the Airbnb case. So if you want to go to a London, then uh, your house will be empty while you are on travel, and therefore you can look for a person who can use your house while you are away. So this kind of arrangement can be made by Airbnb. So we have invited the CTO of the, Na CTO of the Airbnb, Nathan Blecharczyk. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Annyeong. I'm Nathan Blacharczyk. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Airbnb. I wanted to start by telling you the inspiration for Airbnb. There's three of us that started the company together. And five years ago, in San Francisco, we were living together as roommates. And I decided to move out. And the other two guys no longer had enough money to pay for the rent. Well, the other two guys are designers, and at the same time, there was a design conference in San Francisco, and all the hotels were sold out. They decided to rent the extra room to designers who needed a place to stay for the conference. They were expecting guys like themselves to want to stay, 25-year-old males. And instead, three very different people chose to stay with them. One was a 35-year-old woman from Boston, one was a father of four from Utah, and the third was a man from India. They all went to the conference together and had a great time. They became friends, and they made $1,000 that weekend. From that experience, we decided to make a website to do this for other people. Now fast forward five years, and tonight, 100,000 people will be doing something that was virtually non-existent four years ago. 100,000 people will be staying in the home of someone else, someone they otherwise don't know, instead of a hotel. This is a huge change in human behavior. And it's a change in the way that people experience the world and each other. And it's happening on Airbnb. But I think Airbnb is just the leading indicator of something much bigger that's happening. A change in human behavior based around sharing. And today, what I want to talk about is how Airbnb illustrates how sharing is going to change our lives. So Airbnb is a website, a platform where you can rent your extra room, your entire home, or any other type of space. You can make it available for nightly rental. And we call these people hosts. These are regular people. And we make it simple for travelers to discover and book these accommodations online. We call these people guests. And the process is very simple. As a traveler, it's as simple as booking a hotel. So you come to our homepage, and you type in your destination. You're going to get back a whole bunch of results. You'll browse through those. And then, if you find something you like, you can book it online, including the payment. Today, we have 350,000 properties available all over the world in 40,000 different cities, 192 different countries. We have 1,000 right here in Seoul. And in some cities, like New York and Paris, we have over 19,000 properties offered by individuals. And every one of these properties is different. That's what's so special about it. We have extra bedrooms. This bedroom is here in Seoul. It's rented by a retired couple whose children have grown up and gotten married and moved out. And now you can stay with him, uh, them. We have entire homes. 
This is in San Francisco, a very typical colorful home. This is great if you want some extra space for your family, privacy. This is a very special experience. Speaking of very special, we have some one of a kind properties, things that you might not even know were available, but they exist in people's backyards. Tree houses are actually very popular on Airbnb. Here's a giraffe preserve you can stay on. The giraffe will serve you breakfast. You can even stay in an igloo. So we have all kinds of properties that offer you one-of-a-kind experiences, a different way to travel. And these properties are being offered by individuals, regular people like you or I, sharing their home, oftentimes for the first time. 80% of these properties that you're seeing are people's primary residences. This is where they normally live most of the time. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why they do this. But our major innovation has been to make this process simple and safe. Some of the things we do to make it safe is that as a guest, when you book something, you pay Airbnb the entire amount at the time of booking. And we hold your money until after you arrive. That way, if you need to cancel or you show up and the place is not as described, there's any sort of problem, you can call our 24-7 customer support line and we can give your money back to you. So as a consumer, you know you're protected. And as a host, you know that the guest has put their credit card on file. So just like when you stay at a hotel and you give your credit card to the front desk, the hotel knows that you're not going to mess up the room, because if you do, you're going to pay for it. Likewise, the host knows that you are accountable. And there's a whole bunch of other things that we do on the back end. But one of the things that I'm really proud to announce uh, for the first time that we're going to do here in Korea, because we think there's so much potential in Korea for Airbnb and the sharing economy, is we're going to offer a 1 billion won host guarantee. What that means is, as a host, if you're putting up your property and you're worried about property damage or that your belongings might be stolen, well, you don't need to worry. Because up to 1 billion won, Airbnb will pay you if anything goes wrong. That's how confident we are in what we do. So we're having amazing impact on individuals. The most obvious impact is the financial impact. Last year, our typical host made 5,800 US dollars by renting out their space only 42 days of the year. That means three days a month, and they made an extra $5,800. And they used that money to pay for important life expenses. 42% of people use that money to pay very important bills. Now, there's so much talk of the financial recession, and government is doing so much to stimulate the economy. What is a more sustainable and scalable way to stimulate the economy than this? People taking what they already have and monetizing it to provide what they need to pay their bills. But actually, I think something that perhaps is even more powerful than the money is the psychological empowerment that people feel when they take control of their destiny. I want to read you a story that I think illustrates this very well. So this woman is a host uh, in the Bay Area, in California. And she says, I had an amount of money that I needed to pay for my dog's surgery. But now seeing that the income from Airbnb is mostly reliable, my target has grown. I want to expand my bakery and do different things. The extra income enables me to play a little more, explore, and try things that I otherwise might feel limited to. because of lack of resources. In other words, people do this maybe with a specific goal in mind, but when they start feeling that success and the confidence they build with this extra income, they basically become micro-entrepreneurs. And they take that, and they not only apply it to Airbnb, but they apply it to other things in life too, like this woman starting her bakery. 
Community is also something that Airbnb fosters. Our hosts tell us that this is a way of traveling without ever leaving their homes. And there's a story, I think, that really illustrates this as well. Uh, we had a meetup in London, and one of our hosts came up to us and said, there's a word that you never use on your website. It's friendship. He says, I want to tell you a story about friendship. He said, the London riots broke out in front of my home two years ago. And there was massive damage to his street. Actually, a few homes burned down. And 24 hours after the riots, his mother called him to make sure he was okay. And he said, yes, mom, I'm okay. Yes, mom, the house is okay. But what's amazing is, in those 24 hours between the riots and when his mom called, seven of his past Airbnb guests called him to make sure he was okay. I think that really speaks to the kinds of relationships that are being built uh, through this interaction. Here's a story that illustrates all three of these concepts. Again, treehouses are very popular. But this treehouse was built for the children of these hosts. And the, the kids grew up, they went to university. And while at university, uh, they went to New York, and they used Airbnb in New York. And over the holidays, they came back home, and for whatever reason, they got the idea to put the treehouse onto Airbnb. Now fast forward two and a half years. Over 1,100 people have stayed in the treehouse. And the parents have made over $100,000. That's crazy, this treehouse. And what's really nice is that the father, who's retired, is now, was now motivated to pursue his contracting license, his general contracting license, so that he can build treehouses for other people because it's been so transformative for them. There's also a huge impact that's being had on society. One is the environment. So by reusing the resources that we already have, uh, we need to build less, uh, means less urban sprawl. And also, hotels are a huge consumer of energy and water and producer of waste. And by living more like a local, I think that means living more sustainably. There's also a benefit to neighborhoods that's rather unique. So in most cities, the hotels are clustered into a few neighborhoods that become very touristy. And in the case of Airbnb, our properties are spread evenly throughout most cities. And so we have many properties in cities or in neighborhoods uh, where there are no hotels. And it just so turns out that when travelers come to a city and spend their money, they spend the majority of their money in the neighborhood where they're staying. And so travelers are staying in these neighborhoods and they're spending their money at local restaurants, shopping, small businesses. That money that they're spending is being pumped into the local economy to the small business owners that might not be seeing the benefit that larger corporations are seeing as a result of tourism and growth in the economy. So I think this is also really good for those who are not even hosts on Airbnb. We did the survey of our users, and we asked them. 35% told us that they stayed longer in the city because Airbnb made it more affordable for them to do so. And 75% of people said that they are more likely to come back to that city because of how they experienced Airbnb, or, or the city. By living like a local, they got a stronger impression and are more likely to return. That's a huge win-win for tourism in a city. There's also been something that was a bit unexpected, an unexpected benefit of the platform, which is that in situations, disasters, where people are displaced, our platform has become a great tool to rally people together and offer resources to those who need it. An example is in November of last year, Megastorm Hurricane Sandy struck New York City, and tens of thousands of people were affected and displaced from their homes. It was an emergency that nobody was expecting. Well, within a couple of days, we were able to use our platform, and 1,400 people offered their homes through Airbnb 
free of charge for those who were displaced and needed something in a time of need. I think that was really powerful. But Airbnb is just an example of something that's much bigger that's happening. It's being referred to as the sharing economy. The idea behind the sharing economy is that we have all these things, these assets, time that's underutilized, and now technology is making it possible to monetize those extra assets, that extra time. And so, hundreds of companies have been started over the last couple of years, specializing and monetizing cars and rides, parking, tasks, using technology. And there's actually at least a dozen companies here in Korea that are doing the same thing. But I think the sharing economy represents a shift in consumer behavior. The last 50 years have been dominated by hyperconsumption. People just buying so much stuff, more stuff. And studies have shown that more stuff doesn't actually make you happier. In fact, people are less happier than they were 50 years ago. And people keep buying this stuff, but they can't possibly use it all. It just sits in their garage, or they don't use it. Well, why has this happened? Well, money has been cheap, easy access to credit. And there's just been an explosion in advertising trying to convince you to spend your money. And people have desired to show their status by buying things. Individual ownership was how people showed off. But that's changing. And in the new era, we're seeing what we call collaborative consumption, which is these platforms online make it possible for people to accumulate a reputation and share knowledge, build communities, and eventually share access to these things that they've accumulated and now need to monetize in order to pay the bills. And in the future, access will trump ownership, meaning you will be able to access so many more things than you could ever afford to do. Who wants to own something that locks you into a commitment? Diversity is increasingly what is interesting to us all. And I think it's the evolution of the internet that's actually allowing this to happen, among other things, that I think are really interesting. The first wave of the internet was all about e-commerce, bringing offline commerce online. The second wave of the internet was social, uploading our lives and using the internet even as our primary form of communication. And in a lot of ways, the internet has been replacing the offline world. And people have different feelings about that. In some ways, it's good. In other ways, we're leaving behind something that's pretty special. But I think the third wave of the internet has the potential to bring this all back together. It's the integration of our online and offline lives happening through things like mobile. There's a more seamless integration. Think of the sharing economy, using the internet to change our offline behavior and do more offline. Think of all the uh, fitness applications, like the Nike Fuel Band that you wear around your wrist, and it helps you live a healthier life. Think about Google Glass, where you wear this glass, glasses, and it, you have augmented reality and gives you information. Um, going forward, online is going to be integrated into our offline lives, and hopefully it'll allow us to live richer lives. So we are in 40,000 different cities, and we have a major presence in most of the major cities. And so I'm very aware of what leaders think about the sharing economy, and there's a lot of interest. A lot of people think this is an interesting idea, but very few people have done anything about it. And we've been watching what Mayor Park has been doing here in Seoul, and I am totally blown away by how proactive this mayor has been in terms of seeing the future and taking proactive measure to become the leader. I think there's an opportunity for Seoul to show the rest of the world what the sharing economy can become. And he's outlined a number of areas of opportunity um, and has provided resources to local companies to help make that a reality here in Seoul. But from our perspective, from Airbnb's perspective, 
I think South Korea has a huge potential as well. We're just seeing amazing adoption already. Over the last four months alone, in 2013, we've added over 1,200 additional properties here in Korea. And as a result of that, 500% more people have come over the first four months of 2013 than came last year. It's a huge increase. This could transform. In Paris and New York, there's 19,000 available properties. Here in Seoul, there's about 1,000. But I think in a year from now, there could be 10,000. It could be a new way of experiencing the city. And speaking of a new way of experiencing the city, <laughs> I've been experiencing it the authentic way myself. So this is where I'm staying. It's a Hano, uh, near the palace, rented through Airbnb, of course. Uh, it's awesome. It makes me really feel like I'm here, and I step outside my door, and people are going to work, and it's a residential neighborhood. It's so much more authentic. And uh, my host was actually so nice. She came over each morning and dropped me off an authentic breakfast. It's just so warm. And this is my first time in Korea, and I'm left with an incredibly favorable impression. I can't wait to come back. In closing, I want to leave you with one thought which is that sharing has not only the massive value proposition, but beyond that, it's emotionally powerful and satisfying. And I think this can really change our lives in a very human way. Thank you.